Hi boys. So this week I have a request from Jojo to do a ghost scene. Something that he'd seen in the Harry Potter books. So this is going to be a real challenge for me and I've been thinking about it for the last couple days. So we'll see what I can do. And then hopefully maybe some of the techniques that uh, I show you this week you can use in the future and maybe do a different picture that's in your head. I know all, when things are in my head, what I'm thinking about, not necessarily what's in your head, even though you've tried to describe it to me. Before we start, I wanted to talk about the three words translucent, transparent, and opaque. I was wondering if you guys knew what that meant. So, opaque is when something is, you can't see through it. It's totally non-see-through. Translucent is more like this, where you can see through it some, but it's not clear. And then transparent is like this, where you can totally see through it. And what we're going to use today in our watercolor is we're going to be doing things that are translucent. And because watercolor is very much a translucent medium, it's one of the wonderful things about it, we're going to be able to do kind of a, a ghost thing using that property. So it's got out your paper. We're going to be using grays today. Uh, you can't paint in white, and that's one of the challenges, of course, with doing this project is that we can't put a dark background down and then just paint a white ghost on top of it with watercolors. You'd have to use something else. So I've tried different things and this is kind of the solution that I came up with. So we'll see how it works. I never know. You want your paper, water, paper towels, your brushes, and your paint. And as far as I know, the only color we're going to use is gray, maybe, or black that we're going to water down to gray. Maybe we'll add some other colors. We'll see. Okay. See you in a bit. So actually, um, I wanted to say that I don't think I'm going to use gray. So I've changed my mind on that. For the background, I'm going to use green. And you can do any color you want for the background of your piece. Maybe you want brown, maybe you want dark blue, but something that is dark, um, a darker color I think would be better. So let's see what everybody chooses. I'll show you what mine's gonna be. Okay, so I have gone through several different ideas for myself. I've gone back and forth on what I'm going to do, what we should do, but We'll just take it one step at a time. So I think first we would like to, let's mix up a green that is kind of an ugly green. So I'm going to start with my sap green. It's, that's a green I really love, sap green. I think it's beautiful. We're going to need kind of a lot of it. I want to make sure we have enough. And then I'm going to mix a brown with it. And I keep a book of all my colors. This is my color book. Where I've swatched out what colors make other colors. So like for this color green here, what I do is I go up here, and this is okay, that's sap, sap green here. And I've mixed it with Payne's Gray over here. So that color mixed with sap green. So what I can do is I can look on these colors and say, oh, I like that color. And then I can figure out what I need to mix together to make it. So I was thinking I mixed it with brown, but maybe not. I guess I mixed it with Haynes Gray. So let me put a little more water into the Payne's Green, see what that does. 
Yeah, that's kind of an ugly green. Let's see, is it ugly enough? Scary enough? No, I think it needs a little more black. A little more darkness to it. How does this look? Yeah, that's kind of a better. I like that one better. Okay. So this is going to be, oh, one of the things I, I didn't tell you you needed was a crayon or a pastel, one of the two. Now, I have something called gelato, so it's, I'm not going to have exactly what you have, but um, it's pretty close, I think. So get, go ahead and get your crayon, and it should be one, the lightest color possible. Now, what I've got is I've got white here. We'll see if you can see what I'm doing. This is, it's kind of like a pastel. <coughs> Excuse me. What we're going to do, we're going to make the ghosts on our paper with this color, with our crayon. And we really don't want this to show up. We want this to be kind of the same color as the paper. Then we're going to put a, a watercolor wash over everything and they'll stick out. So the first thing we're going to do Maybe I'll do this with just a pencil here so you can see. We're going to do a table. Our table's going to come about that far, I think. And that's the only thing we really need to draw in. We're going to, I was going to freehand, like in that. Um, I was going to, a little bit further over, just paint by ourselves without drawing it in some of the table things. So for now, we're just gonna do that so we know that's our table. And again, we can go back and take off the excess lead from the pencil. I think you can see that. In the other videos, I've noticed you can really see what I'm doing. Can you see what I've done there? I don't know. Anyway, I'll check it out when before I send it. Okay, so now, what we're going to do, I'm going to have four people here, four ghosts. And so we're just going to do a round head. Maybe I should show you the piece I did before. Okay, this is my practice piece. And so we're going to have four images. And the main part is to have the head, so over here you can see it better, the head then a neck, and then just kind of a body. This goes down. It's going to be not uh, real specific, but just kind of an image. So that's the next thing we'll do. Okay, so now I have my gelato crayon. We start over here. And the heads, can you, I wonder if you can see that a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Make the head, and then you can think, oh, this good girl, I'm going to put some, maybe some things that look like hair, and then a neck, and then her body. Just kind of, you know. Then this one's going to be a little taller. I'm going to make this a man, make his head. And then his, let's see, whoa, big head. And then a neck. And then big shoulders, bigger shoulders, and kind of like a triangle down here. Just fill it all in. Now I've got a bunch of like shavings, which I'll get rid of later. Now this one's going to be another man, going to be, but he's going to be shorter. Make that. And let's see, thicker neck maybe, make them a little distinguished. And then kind of like just down like that. So the table's here, so he goes a little bit beyond the table. And then over here, a taller woman. And I'm going to kind of do some hair, long hair. 
So we're sure it's a girl, a woman. And then her, her neck. There. And then her body. Just maybe I'll just go like this a little bit. Just down like that. Okay, and then, yeah, you can see that. I've got shavings, like I said. And I'm gonna get rid of that, make sure all the shavings are gone. Okay, now I've got my green color here, right there. And remember, we have our table here. We're not going to color this. This is gonna be just left plain right now. We are going to go over the whole paper, including the people, with water. You're gonna get your big brush and just wet everything but where the table is. Remember we can we want it to glisten, but we don't want it to pool. Now depending on the kind of paper you have. Um, whether if it's watercolor paper it will take more water if it's good watercolor paper it will take water really well if it's less expensive water paper color paper it will take water but it won't take as much and then if it's just like mixed media paper it takes some but not a ton okay so now I think I've just got about, looks to me like there's a, well here's pooling here, I can see some pooling, it's running, I want to pick that up. There's a pool in here a little bit too. Now, I think, I thought this was really fun when I did it before. I'm going to take this brush and, it uh, be a good thing if I checked what the color, okay, there's, that's, that's plain. Let's see. This one, did I use this one before? No, okay, those both wash out good. I'm gonna pick up this color, lots of it, put it on the top. Just, just put tons of it on. Maybe I didn't even make enough. And they're gonna bring it, we're gonna bring it down the page. I could have made more, so this is a, as you're doing it. You know, I have some other green here. I think I'm going to add this green because I need more color. I need more paint. Pull it down. And the crayon that we used will resist it. Wouldn't you know, it doesn't look like it's resisting it as well as when I did my practice piece. Huh. Interesting. And we shall see when I'm done, because we are going to add more water, more water. Let's see if the images start coming out. And I've got my spray here. I'm going to spray it. Let it, let it drip. I like that drippy stuff. I think that looks good. And then, hope you remembered your paper towels. I'm going to take my paper towel and go over some of the images. This is called lifting. I think I lifted the crayon up too much. So, I'm going to you can take your paper towel, if your crayon didn't work great, and then really lift off the color, especially since it's really wet. This one I could have, huh. that one did not go very well, but anyway. Um, then over here, the taller one. She had hair, we want to do some hair, the body. We can go over this again. 
kind of want their faces to be the whitest of everything. So make sure you use the clean part of the paper towel. like both to you. Okay. Now I'm liking the running. See it? Oops. You'll see that the water stopped by the table because there was no water into the table line. So I'm just going to go along like that, pick up some of this water. dryer brush and we're going to let that dry. Now I'm taking my brush here and kind of moving the water around because this is supposed to look eerie, right? And seeing if I can make this space especially look more rounded, connected to the body. Maybe it's the almost cut off head. Isn't there some something you were telling me that there was an almost cut off head thing? Maybe that's what that is. Do I want this a little bit more rounded here? So you can play with your brush with a little bit of water and color on it. Move the color around on your paper if it's not dry yet. Okay, I'm going to pull this down here a little bit and kind of just leave it like that. And we're going to let that dry. Now, while we're letting that dry, I think we ought to have the table be a little eerie, too. Ooh. Usually, that's my paper trash can. So without touching the edges of it, just take your crayon and go over it back and forth, kind of like that. I think maybe what I did, one of the reasons my people got kind of erased a bit with my gelato is that I, I might have put too much water on it and then just taking the gelato off. So we shall see. Now I want the table to be brown. Brown. So I'll have to mix up some brown here. And I can take my watercolor book and think what kind of brown would be good for that table. Maybe this brown. I like that brown. And that is Burnt Umber and Prussian Blue. So I think I'll mix those two colors together. Here, my colors I have swatched out and named on this little card. Prussian Blue is this one. And what was the other one? Burnt Umber. Oh, it's the one right next to it, this one. Okay, so let's mix some of that up. I'm going to put, while I'm mixing it up, I'm putting this over here to dry. Prussian blue and burnt umber. Okay. Let's mix those two up. I'm looking for my, here's my brush I like to mix with. I think it'd be good to have a, a paper towel. Russian blue. That's a very pretty blue. I like that. So I'm not sure, again, what colors you have. Isaac and Jonathan, you look like you have a very nice um, watercolor palette, like kind of like the one I have here. I wonder what the name is. You've never told me what the name of your palette. Does it have a name um, as far as the company that made it? So my company here is Van Gogh. And I'm really liking these paints. I think it's more of a European thing. 
actually bought this when I was in Turkey at the store down the street from you guys. I think that store isn't in business anymore. I looked last time I was there last Christmas and sadly I did not see it. I think it's gone out of business. But I got a really good deal on it. Maybe that's why they went out of business, huh? Okay, we were looking for brown. I think this needs more brown. Maybe it would have been better if I'd started out with brown and added the blue because Prussian blue is a very strong color. And you'll find when you're mixing paints that sometimes you all you have to do is add a little bit of paint to change it. Other times you have to add quite a lot. Like you'll have to add quite a lot of um, yellow to change something, but not so much blue. Now that's kind of turned greenish. I'm going to add more brown because we wanted it to be a browner color. I want a browner color for the table. Now let's see what it's like. Oh yeah, that's got a better brown color and I'm going to add even more brown to see what happens. Yeah, I kind of like that. Kind of an ugly brown. That's what I'm going for. It's an ugly brown. Okay, now we're ready to paint our tablecloth. Okay, let's let's just paint it with the paint this time instead of putting water on it. Let's see if that works better. Oh, I think it might. Because we want it to kind of look like there we go. It's not quite distinct. Kind of muted and I want this line. I don't want a white line to be there. nice crisp edge. Now if it, the green was still really wet it would blend and move together and I didn't, wouldn't want that. I want a crisp edge here. Okay now if I think that's too much brown I can go in and blot some away. You know some co colors are called staining colors and other colors are called, I guess, non-staining colors, <laughs> transparent, transparent colors. So depending on what color you use, and that depends on what pigment they have used, the company has used to make their color, it can be a staining color or a transparent color. Now you look here, I was not able to pick up much from here. Not like I picked up from the ghosts. Could be two things. Could be I had a lot more water there and so it was easier to pick up. Or it could be that the green I used is not a staining color as much as the brown that I used. So now we are going to put some um, things on the table, some goblets and some um, oh cake plates and stuff. And then we're going to fill it with an ugly green to go with it. Now, I think I'm going to pull up some of this. This is looking like too much water there for me. You, always, you can always pull up your paint if it's too much. And this is, the, this is a real loose painting where we're not worried about straight lines or fine lines. We want it to look very much like fog, kind of. Okay, so, so far, that is what I've got. Okay, now I'm going to take a brush that has a fine tip. And this is what I did on my practice piece here. Now you can take a pencil if you want and draw these in. I just did this with a fine brush. So it's a kind of a 
U shape with an oval on top and then just a straight line and then a line at the bottom for our glasses and then these are the cake pit plates over here. So I'm going to use a dark blue for this, this color right here, because I want it to stick out because I'm just doing the outlines of it. I think I want, well I'm not even sure what I want, but I will need a paper towel to make sure I don't have too much water. So I'm going to do a line for a goblet here, and then the base of the goblet. Um, and then a U, and then at the top, a very thin oval. You can see that, like that. Then next to that, I think I'm going to draw a cake plate. So that's going to be a longer line. I want it to be straight here. It could be thicker. And then a line down. Very simple. And usually the bases of cake plates are a little smaller than the top part. I do that, and then I'm going to make it come in so it feel like a sturdy cake plate there. Then I'm going to do another goblet. This time I'm going to do the U first and make it a thicker U. And put the oval on top. A line for the stem, and then the base right up there. Then I'm going to make a tall, let's get a little more paint here. You don't want too much paint on your brush for this, so you might want to dab it off on the paper towel before you go for it. Then a long, taller, wider goblet. So we've got some variety here top, stem, and bottom. And then I'm going to do a low cake plate. A little bit of water. Pick up some paint. Dab off to make sure I don't have too much. It's going to be a low cake plate. Not that there has to be cake on it. I'm not thinking that. It's just the kind of a plate that's raised up that you can put stuff on a table. Like that. And then one more thing over here. Maybe a short, sh short glass. Wide that wider. Again you have the thin oval for the top and then the stem. I'm going to do a thicker stem on this one. Thicker bottom. Okay now we need to let those dry because we're going to fill them with slimy stuff. Slimy green stuff I think was the request. So I've got some green here that looks kind of slimy and greeny. So that's what I'm going to use. You, you guys can find some for yourselves. What kind of green, slimy green do you want? And what do you want to put on these uh, in the glasses? You could pick something else, some other color, red. Red would be striking in this picture. Um, and on the plates, what would you like to put on the plates? Now for the last thing, I'm just going to put in this green. Maybe if we'd made the background a different color, this green slime would look 
better and stick out more. And right now, I'm just going to fill these glasses up with green slime. This one too, and I'm getting it kind of watery, I'm wondering what the water will do. Here, I'm going to put in a green cake. Maybe it's a cheese cake. And maybe I'll do the same thing down here. And I think I'm going to make this up here, kind of pouring out on the side, kind of like it's bubbling here too, kind of bubbling down the side, this one, all the way down the side, this one too, let's see. And I think that's going to be it for this. This is going to be a much shorter video, I think, than my other ones. And I think I'm done. How about you guys? I'm not sure how much of a success this was, but it was fun to do it. Thank you, boys. And anyone who has finished the project and would like to suggest something else, have a go at it. And I think I haven't heard anything from Ezra. Ezra, I don't think you have given me any suggestions, so I'm kind of waiting for one from you. Okay. Love you all. Bye-bye.